Imagine your dystopian future. Couple of overturned cars, crops can't grow, swarms of robots are the only signs of life. Pretty textbook Apocalypse 101. Except, what if it's not? What if those robots could be part of the solution to prevent global catastrophe? Robot bees. It's almost impossible to overstate the role that bees, actual bees, play in our world today. Nearly 75% of leading crops depend on animal pollination. Without them, we really would be heading for disaster. But bees have been in trouble for decades, mostly thanks to a toxic mix of habitat loss, pesticides, climate change, and disease. The beekeepers across the United States have lost 45% of honeybee colonies only between April 2020 and April 2021. That's insane. Honeybees are responsible for the one third of the crop we actually eat, right? So it's a big problem. So in one sense, we're already in our dystopian future and we need to find solutions. And for some, that means robot bees. Because in labs all over the world, the race is on to create robot bees capable of pollinating plants and revolutionizing agriculture as we know it. Even if it does still sound like a dystopian nightmare. But how realistic is it to make them in the first place? Because replicating what a bee does is a mammoth challenge. To pollinate a flower, a bee has to locate the flower, identify where the pollen is, navigate through all sorts of elements and obstacles, and then land delicately on the flower itself. That's a huge technological challenge, let alone cramming all that computing power into something as small as a tiny robot. But that's the task facing Chahat Singh at the University of Maryland. We are at a stage where we are have the brain of a bee, but at the size of a hummingbird. So we can do pollination in the wild, but for a certain specific flowers. But what we want is to do pollination for all the flowers in the world, right? And generally, sunflower is like one of the biggest flowers that we can find. So if you want to pollinate the flowers, which are very small, we have to build something which is as small as a honeybee, which is probably gonna be like one hundredth of the size. Also taking on this robot bee challenge is Dr. Kevin Chen at MIT. If I look at the flower, it's just probably about a couple of centimeters. So I have, have to have very good precision for the robot to approach a flower, gently land down the flower, and with very careful control so that it doesn't fall off. So trying to land down flower, approach a flower is very challenging control problem. But that's, that's something we are, we are uh, actively solving right now. But the latest robot bees are already capable of some impressive feats. They can fly in all directions, detect and avoid predators, flip 360 degrees, well, sometimes. And they can already identify specific flowers to pollinate. So we have an AI framework and it goes and searches and detects these flowers. Once you know which flower you want to pollinate, it has a control policy which says that, okay, I wanna go down as close as possible. And on the bottom of the robot B, there's a Velcro which extract these pollen grains. The next goal for Jahat and his team is to downsize this robot hummingbird closer to the size of a bee. But that's much easier said than done. Everything is a trade-off between computer power and size. And the major obstacle facing all robot bee pioneers is battery power on something so tiny. These drones currently have a battery life of about five to seven minutes because of the current state of batteries we have. So one of the things that excites me, how do you come up with this cognitive design which is very similar to the mind of the bee to actually get things working on that small of a scale. Because you can't just take an artificial intelligence framework that works on a bigger drone and just downsize it. Near future, I would say, I would definitely see the bees will be needed to work indoors in which they will be tethered to a power supply. Thinking about deploying a lot of them in the wild and having them pollinate really requires us to solve the energy or the power challenge first. So if you're really trying to either build more efficient bees, but also waiting for the next breakthrough in battery technology that allows us to, to have bees, artificial bees that can fly for a much longer time. But Jahat and his team do have an ingenious solution in the meantime. They're working on an autonomous robo bee hive, where a massive robot mothership of a drone can fly to a tree, attach, and then deploy its smaller robo bee babies out to pollinate. It's easier for the mother beehive to detect these uh, tree branches because it has the entire death maps that you see in most of the self-driving cars, right? So it goes and autonomously attaches 
or latches on and the mother bee commands these smaller bees you find you pollinate and you come back to the bee and these entire pipeline is autonomous right so if you have a field of about a thousand flowers we would need about eight to ten small robo bees which can go around the field and pollen thousand flowers in about five to seven minutes but if the goal is essentially robotic pollination and the intricacies of both flight and power are proving so difficult do we really need them to fly at all that's what researcher Yu Gu is looking at with his team at West Virginia University. He's developing a ground-based robot that can pollinate flowers as they go up and down the aisle of an indoor farm. What we're doing is more like a human pollinating, hand pollinating cucumbers in a garden. So if all goes as planned, with the extra computing power that something like this would bring, there's way more that you might be able to do than just pollinate. Yugu's robots would be able to monitor the plants at the same time and send back reams more data to make farming more efficient and deliver bigger yields. The ability to pollinate is also the ability to support many other tasks. So robots in some form are definitely part of the future of farming. But let's go back to the robot bees. Say all goes perfectly well. We resolve the battery power problem. Robot bees are now capable of pollinating fields worth of crops at a time but swarms of tiny robots that could fly anywhere, record information undetected, and be controlled remotely, hmm, what could possibly go wrong with that? Apart from it literally being a Black Mirror episode. If, say, I'm an evil scientist, I want to do spying on people. From a serious scientist perspective, if I really want to do that evil thing, I probably wouldn't take RoboBee as my first candidate to do those. If I build a rotary vehicle, the aerodynamic efficiency is much higher than flapping wing. Given the current engineering constraint, I probably build a smaller quad rotor. So basically, there's better ways to spy on us. Great. Everything that the bee sees or anything that it sends is computed on the bee itself. And it's not sending these information to any other source and not relying on any other source to do this computation. That stops the risk of the hacking of these tiny drones. Marginally satisfying, although still relying on a fair bit of trust there. But personal security is not the only concern that people have raised. For a start, ecological waste and damage could be another unintended consequence. But it seems to me a bit of a flawed solution. They're going to break down, they're going to need maintaining. There's the risk of them being hacked into. Probably a much cheaper solution would be to look after real insects. We are the reason they're declining and we could use fewer pesticides, leave a little more habitat for them. We often overlook the really obvious simple solution and instead try to invent some really complicated technological fix. There's certainly no replacement for actual bees. It's estimated that nearly 600 billion worth of global crops depend on pollinators such as bees to grow. They're absolutely essential to global food production and saving them from collapse has to be a priority. But when it comes to robot bees, it's not exactly an either or scenario as the researchers are keen to stress. We have no intention of replacing bees. We are looking for a solution which could aid or help honeybees. I think, you know, trying to build robotic prototypes of smaller insects help us to understand insects and it can be beneficial for the biologists as well. Evolution has like 3.8 billion years of research and development. We should definitely learn from them. There are also other pollination scenarios where bees don't even exist in the first place. Like here. We're also thinking about if you want to do assisted agriculture experiment in space. In those cases, of course, now we are using humans, right? The astronaut will be doing the pollination, etc. But hopefully we can automate that process in the longer term. But it's not only about pollination for these robot bees. The researchers also dream of other exciting real world applications. The scenario that I want to give is, for example, there is an earthquake and the building collapsed and there are people who are trapped inside. What microscale robot can be very useful to search for how many people are trapped and where are those people trapped. And beyond search and rescue, they can also help us avoid other doomsday scenarios by going where humans struggle to reach, like inspecting weak spots in bridges or helping escape a nuclear meltdown. These tiny little bee drones, they can go near the surface of these power plants and they can look for the cracks and they can scan the entire thing to understand, okay. Is there anything that needs to be repaired before we start this operation? So while swarms of robot bees might still be decades away, if they happen at all, it's clear that the technology is advancing rapidly. 
And although it's tempting to pitch bees against robot bees in some Hunger Games style winner takes all, that's not really the case. Actual bees are the real deal and need protecting. But robot bees may well have a part to play. 